Yo, 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 what up, y'all? You are listening to a brand new episode of Behind the Baller Podcast. Yes, yes, indeed, you know, the world famous BTB podcast show. Um, I am your host, Ben Baller, not Ben Humble, also known as the Korean John Cusack, the Korean Liam Neeson, and the Forrest Gump of hip hop. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a crazy show. I don't know what the fuck is in the coffee I drank this morning, but I'm feeling it. Like, I'm really feeling it this week. Today, weekend wrap-up. I don't know what the fuck I was just talking about. I'm just smiling. I I don't know why. I just got that glow right now. It's just kind of crazy. You know what I mean? So, yo, today we're going to be talking about a bunch of shit, okay? Paris Hilton is still mad about something that happened in 2007, okay? Beverly Hills ain't safe anymore. Melrose is hell rose now, okay? Just spent the weekend in Ventura County, chilling with my family, obviously, yes, in the RV, okay? Malibu Seafood versus Neptune's Net. They're trying to cancel my dude, Pepe Le Pew, okay? Steph Curry, Dame Lillard, All-Star Game was fucking crazy. Dunk contest, trash. All-Star Game was kind of crazy, Okay? Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. Nobody gives a fuck. I'm going to say a little bit what I, what, what I think, okay? Because I know Meghan, right? Well, I know Meghan pre-fame, all right? A police officer gets robbed on Melrose. Just the sports car bubble. All kind of, you know what? We're going to start the show off with a scam artist, piece of shit, motherfucker. Yo, Miles, Jordan, a.k.a. the Dust Brothers. Let's start this motherfucking show. I don't know how many times I got to tell you good people, okay, BTB Army listeners, Jay Mazzini is a 1,000% piece of shit, cocksucker, scumbag, dick fuck, fuck bitch, stupid piece of shit, fucking cocksucker, okay? How the fuck do you guys not know? How do you not know at this point? There's a lot of shit right here. I don't understand. Did you not get, there must be a gene missing from a lot of you people. Where it detects sarcasm, it detects um, stupidity, just common fucking sense, okay? So, let's see, he did a Bitcoin scam recently, right? So, Jay Mazzini, who tries to use the nation of Islam, tries to use, you know, being Muslim and all this crazy shit, you know, this dude is such a fucking piece of shit. I, I, I really don't understand how the fuck you guys fall for it. I've said this so much, and you, you know what? It, it's crazy because he keeps going further and further and further, and you guys literally think, you know, to me, you, you dumbass people out there think that I'm being a hater, and I'm just literally trying to warn you people. I'm not selling you guys like MLM shit, you know what I mean, or trying to say stupid shit. It's just insane. Try not doing videos, trying to give away cash to a fast food worker that's not even fucking real, where people are doing all this shit, there's a difference, you know? Like, it's just insane, all right? Jay Mazzini, I guess, went on Twitter and told a ton of people that he was going to buy Bitcoin from them, okay? I truly can't even comprehend how someone could get scammed like this, okay? Study crypto. Watch people who specialize in crypto. Don't Pay attention to fucking scam artists, especially guys like this or guys who have that that vibe like Brad Hager. Was that his name? JT Fox. And now they're saying this guy, Grant Cardone. I don't want to say because I don't really know Grant Cardone, whatever. But I'm just saying like, you know, like Timothy Sykes. You see these scam artists. How do you not? I, I said this from the beginning. I said, yo, bro, this guy has scam vibes all over it. This shit is all. And he's like, man, fuck that dude, Ben Baller, blah, blah. Dude's a fucking. No, motherfucker. You're going to jail, homie. You And the funny thing is, You think that you're not going to get extradited? Trust me. This shit, it's just a matter of time. There's a few people I say about, you know, like, 
I think Timothy Sykes is smart enough to get away with, depending on what he does with his taxes, he's pretty smart. This dude is not that smart. It, it's just so, you, you can't see how fucking fake his whole schmeal is and everything. Like, bro, he had to delete his Twitter. That right then and there is just already a red flag, right? There's a dude named Coffeezilla. Go to Coffeezilla's Twitter page and go to his YouTube. It sums it all up. I don't really need to get too much more into it. This guy is not, everything is a scam. If he said my name was Ben Yang, I would maybe have to go and do some real deep investigating. That, that's how fucking much of a piece of shit scammer this guy is. I hate to start off the shit. I'd rather give you guys a warning, all right? Just had to say that off top. Okay, next up. The world is getting softer and softer as we know. It's just getting to the point where, I don't know if it's Generation Z, I don't know what the fuck it is. They're trying to separate boys and girls sections at the at the stores and shit. Like, look, you can't take away genetic science. I don't give a fuck what you feel like you identify with the best. Okay, I identify with an NBA player, all right? I am not going to fucking protest or go on a hunger strike or tell people, yo, man, if you don't call me, if I'm not in the NBA, then, you know, this is bullshit. Like, this shit is just never going to stop. Someone at Target needs to be like, yo, no, nah, you tripping. Like, look, I get it. Some people, you know, if my son later was like, hey, man, you know, dad, I like boys, whatever the fuck, and yeah, cool. But if he tries to tell me like, oh, you know, I did, no, no, look, I'm not saying it's, but like, I'm not going to let somebody go and tell, like, at a point, you know, people are saying, hey, you're not being sensitive. Look, you're being too sensitive, okay? People are going to start saying that they're birds. They're going to start saying that they're fucking, you know, marsupials. They're going to start saying the craziest shit you've ever heard in your life. And it just never will stop if you don't put a line in it, okay? So starting with, Paris Hilton, who is, I think, 40 years old now, okay? Fun fact, I have known Paris for shit. How long have I known Paris now? 25 years or so. We have been friends for 25 years, I don't know if. I used to hang out there quite a bit here and there. You know, cool, she's famous. Here but at the end of the day, I never had irritated the bitch. I never wanted to, you know, excuse my language. I'm sorry, you know what? This may come across her desk. I know her that well, right? Um, but like, we never got like super close to anything. But you know, I'm talking about... I've been to almost every place that she's had since she's had her own place, right? And like, I never had issues. She's never, you know, maybe she had some kind of weird things and she might, but she's a nice person for the most part, right? And she's famous and cool. But I'm talking about, I've known her way before she was like famous, famous way before the sex tape with my boy Rick Solomon, right? Yes, I've been going out for a long time. Yeah, have you not figured that out yet? That in LA and Hollywood, it's a small world and going out, Everyone kind of knows everyone. Some people, you could be a square and be, you know, a fly on the wall, be whatever. Look, I've been both. Not a square, sorry. I've been the motherfucker that's been in the mix. Could anybody honestly say you listen to this show and you don't think 20 years ago? You think 20 years ago I was quiet at a party? Like, really think about that, okay? So anyways, Paris Hilton is saying that David Letterman's interview with her was super rude, right? I mean, you know, th this shit is crazy, man. It's, it's what it is. And he's a comedian. Started as a comedian first. Then she said that Sarah Silverman, is that her name? Sarah Silverstein, what the fuck's name? She said that Sarah Silverman, her comment about the MTV Awards, whatever, some shit about jails being made out of dicks. Look, this Paris is my homie, but at the end of the day, how are you going to tell comedians what they should say or how, you know, to stop? Like, that shit's crazy. Because again, Andrew Dice Clay can't have the career he had today. And that's fucked up. Now look, saying the F word, saying the N word. And when I say the F word, I'm talking about the F-A-G continued on and the N word with the E-R. That's just, you know, it is what it is. And we're not going to get into all that. I'm just saying, look, some shit is just, you know, comedians. It should be off limits. It's comedy. People say, oh, it's always funny unless it's about you. It's funny all the time, even when it's about me. Don't matter if they talk about my mama, whatever the fuck it is. It's funny. Okay? So with that said... It's getting to a point where they're just going to continue the fuck shit and get softer and softer. And now the ultimate, I mean, they already tried to cancel Dr. Seuss last week, right? But this weekend, they're saying that Pepe Le Pew and Speedy Gonzalez, is it Speedy too? I don't know. It was Pepe Le Pew for sure though. That was my dude. Fuck Speedy. No disrespect to Max or anything. Like, fuck Speedy. Pepe Le Pew was my dude. I love that motherfucker. I don't know what it was. He, man, for a skunk, and I don't like skunks, 
Pepe Le Pew. If you are, I don't know what, how, I don't know about you younger cats, but if you over 40, I just know at my age, I love Pepe. I love Bugs Benny. Okay. Pepe Le Pew is encouraging and promoting rape culture. If you don't get all the way the fuck out of my ass lice, are you fucking crazy? If you can't see, all right, normal people, again, you must be missing a gene. They must be, it must have been the vaccines, right? It was the vaccine. No, okay? Look, normal people know a cartoon. You know, don't jump off the fucking cliff, okay? You don't know, you know what? You need to belong. You belong in one of them padded rooms. You belong on the short bus. Am I making fun of it? Yes. Okay? I have people I know dearly who have mentally challenged children and everything else. I got a son who has, but at the end of the day, someone needs to get smacked the fuck up if they can't decipher or literally see the difference between a cartoon and real life, okay? Yes, Elmer Fudd is shooting motherfucking ducks' heads off. And that shit don't see, like, what the fuck? I would hate if Peter got involved a long time ago about this shit, okay? That's how crazy this is. Pep Le Pew be trying to fucking, you know, choke chicks here and there and try to grab, you know, the female skunk and try to kiss her and everything and do all this stuff. Man, it's just like, you just know it's funny, but it's like, you know it's not real life. That's not how real life goes. That's not how people, that's not how girls rock. Like, how the fuck, what is going on? Man, yo, like, this shit has really got me fucked up. I'm just really bugged out by it, okay? So, anyways, I just spent the weekend in Ventura County, off PCH, just chilling, you know, Channel Island living, kicking it. Ocean view, chilling. You know what I mean? People are like, yo, man, you just sleep at like an RV park and shit. I'm like, yeah, man, why not? If it's a highly rated RV park. You know, I go there and I pull up and my rig ain't even close to the nicest rig there. And I like it like that. That's cool. You know, it's a popular thing right now. People who have a little bit of bread, they don't want to stay home and they don't want to be fucking stupid to be out in the club or be out in the streets and be just around all the fuckery. So that's where the savages are, right? And they're out, you know, they want to be in an RV and chill. They want to go try places. Look, you're in a home. No matter what, no matter anything you want, you won't be homeless. You're in a home. You're chilling. You want to go somewhere? Cool. You're in traffic? Who gives a fuck? Like I said many times. So, you know, we took an RV trip. Drove an hour and a half. You know, beach view. Going to the beach. Living life. Kids are having fun. Barbecuing on, on the fucking grill. Ordered some motherfucking wing stop. Had some seafood. Chilling at the beach again. Kicking it, got a little sunburn, I ain't tripping. Kids are laughing, smiling, watching movies and shit. Just chilling. Like life is good, okay? Kicking it. I watched this movie, The Meg. Don't know what the fuck, how the fuck I missed it, whatever. I thought it was a cartoon or some shit. It's about a Megalodon shark, which is my two sons' favorite fucking shark in the world. They've been talking about Megalodons for the last four fucking years. Longer than that even, okay? And I'm not really a big fan of Jason Stratham or Stratham or Stratham or whatever the fuck I pronounce his name. I've actually met dude before. But the movie is really fucking good. The Meg. And then uh, we saw Raya. The new Disney film. Raya. And supposedly I had heard a couple years ago that the movie was supposed to be called Kaya. And I think it would have been cool if it was, right? Because my daughter was already born, whatever. But um, my wife's like, I'm glad it wasn't. Because then everyone named their daughter Kaya or whatever. Because I guess every time a Disney has a princess or something, like a girl named Ariel or Elsa, whatever the fuck it is. I don't know. Anyways, Raya was lit too. Very, very good. Only problem is I pay for fucking Disney Premium, okay? They wanted $30. Those motherfuckers, Disney, wanted $30 for that movie. Be like, oh, you're rich. Shut the fuck up. But anyways, if they start doing that with the real features, like the real shit, okay, cool. Saw Coming to America this weekend. I kind of got mixed reviews, man. And, you know, part of me is like, look, I can't bash this movie because Arsenio Hall is a friend of mine. Uh, I idolize, Who didn't fucking idolize Eddie Murphy? Come on, everyone did. It, it was cool. I had some friends who definitely had different opinions, but, you know, like, it was cool. It was, it was good. Was it coming to America? No. People were like, oh, should have been. 
you know, like when you see certain sequels, you know, they, they are strong, like Rush Hour, sequel strong, Beverly Hills Cop, sequel strong. I think after the second one, though, Beverly Hills Cop, you know, it got tough and I never saw Dr. Doolittle. Maybe I did, I'm not sure. But like, you know, just some sequels rock, some don't. But for the most part, like, you know, the big ones, they keep going because they're good. Maybe I need to watch Coming to America again. I don't want this to be any kind of negative thing towards, because again, that's my boy. Like, anyways, going on. I did get the vaccine on Thursday, right? On Thursday, I get the vaccine. And let me break down the situation to you. I walk in. Um, they only let you in five minutes before your shot. You go in, you know what I'm saying? You have your name, boom, filled out. Then there's like, you know, one section for essential workers, all other people, boom. And then there's, you know, the section for the people who are, you know, have special needs, whatever it may be. If they have someone in a family, something like whatever, you know, doctors know that type of shit. I go in. And uh, they ask you, you know, some about your history, ask you about health, everything else, whatever, boom. But, you know, for the most part, some people lie, some people are honest. Um, told them the truth, had a blood test, you know, during the pandemic, I'm good, full physical, everything, I'm good, in good health, everything, cool. Um, they told me to give me the Pfizer shot, and I'm like, you know what, fuck it, it is what it is. I get the shot on my left arm, and then, uh, you know, they're like, hey, man, we need to wait, hang out for 15 minutes, make sure you're good at 15 minutes, raise your hand, someone will come and give you all the info. 15 minutes, I'm chilling, it comes up pretty fast. I don't feel no headache, no nothing, no nothing. You know, they're just trying to make sure I was cool. They're like, all right, your next shot will be in two weeks, two to three weeks. Uh, just pay attention to your email, blah, blah, whatever. And then like every single day since I got the vaccine shot, I have gotten a text doing a daily check-in, how you feeling, whatever, boom. All right, so let me tell you this. The only thing that I felt was my arm was sore than a bitch, okay? It just started feeling better like last night. That motherfucker... Thursday night, Friday especially, Friday and Saturday, my arm was fucked up. I couldn't do a push-up to save my life. My left arm was, and I said the right arm push-ups, but my left arm was fucking in pain. Other than that, I'm cool. Now they say when you get the second vaccine shot, that's when shit gets real sketchy, right? Usually you get sick, but then they say, you know, you get sick for a day or two, right, at max. Now the thing with the vaccine is this, man. Again, I don't get where the rumors are and all the weirdo shit that's going on. People saying, oh, man, you got to be careful. This, not my doctor said. Look, everyone just need to fucking relax. Okay? I know what I signed up for. If I fucked up, I ain't about to sit there and be like, well, uh, you know I'm loud enough to like, I'm gonna, if I'm wrong, I'm going to tell you I'm wrong. Loudly, too. I got no problem with being wrong. I'm not tripping. Right? But for the most part, with science, and people say, oh, man, how the fuck can they be so fast? Did this in one year. <laughs> Motherfucker, there's kids coming out of high school. Fucking people like Zion. There's people doing this, people doing that. People are fucking, it shit has gone faster. There's more money involved. There's much more intelligence. There's more, just people that are smarter in the world. There is just, they're internet. People exchange notes. There's all kinds of shit. The world was involved in this vaccine. Not just fucking Alaska. I'm just making that fucking up. I'm just saying, okay? So, look, I took it from what I know. God forbid I get COVID after my second shot. You know what? It should reduce the feeling of it big time. Now, could I still pass it off to my family members? Absolutely. And what I know, I don't know. So you still got to be careful. I'm going to be careful. But you know what? If there are travel mandates and everything else, guess what? I'm good. I got my card. I'm chilling. You know what? want to try to contribute to society and do good, and that's what it is, okay? I forgot to mention that last week we did fan questions part one, and this week we're going to do fan questions part two. Now, let me go back to my trip real quick, so I'm looking at my fucking notes, okay? And I guess I fucked up. All right, so coming home yesterday, we decided to stop at the famous Malibu Seafood, okay? Seafood market, you can buy the fresh fish right there, boom, and everything. Look, I'm going to straight up tell you. I had a bunch of people tell me, oh man, Neptune's Net is better. No, it's not. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you straight up. I love Neptune's Net. That was my fucking hang. I damn near lived there every Saturday and Sunday on my motorcycle who rides a Neptune's Net and then we rode to Melrose at Johnny Rockets. We'll get to Melrose in a second. But is Malibu Seafood better than Neptune's Net? I just said it is. It is better. Okay. Get you the fish and chips. Now I wish they had catfish. Okay. That's the only thing I wish. Okay. But the fried squid, the motherfucking fish and chip, their motherfucking clam chowder is elite. All right? Grilled mahi maki, elite. French fries, bomb as fuck. All right? Low baked potato is lit. 
right? The lobster is lit. Crabs, lit. If you fuck around and get their clams, you know, that shit. But we didn't have that kind of time, all right? We was driving an RV, pulled over, boom. Another thing, being at the beach with an RV is undefeated. You get sandy, you get fucking all crazy. With it. You take a shower outside that bitch, wash yourself off, boom. Go inside, take a shower, chill out, whatever. You want to hang out at the beach all fucking day? Go watch whatever, chill. You just can't park there from 2 to 4 in the morning. So you can't stay overnight. But you can kind of just, it's an underrated feeling, all right? I was about to say on something else again. I was like, yo, going to Legoland, going to Disney. I can't wait to do these type of things, right? They just made an announcement that they're going to allow sporting events and all that other shit. So I'm excited more so for fucking Seahawks games, right? And the Dodger games, of course. And, you know, um, these Laker game situations, I don't know what's going to happen now because, you know, floor seats get interesting because you're right there. So I, I don't know what's up yet. going to figure that out because they got to refund me my, my tickets for last year. But um, we are going to get into fan questions in one second. I just want to say real quick, Beverly Hills isn't safe, all right? For real, for real, it has always been one of the safest places I could think of, and it was just people just didn't even think about it. Yo, shit is gone crazy now. Three hood motherfuckers pulled up, tried to fucking steal this, this Middle Eastern guy's watch, his Richard Mill. Definitely wasn't a half million dollar watch. He was capping a little bit, right? But quarter million dollar watch, no doubt. Tried to steal his watch. They wrestled him off, and boom, he was fighting the dude. Which, as you know, fuck it, it is what it is. Some people have, they have the obligation, what, what they want. And it was at first said that he had got shot, but he didn't. Now, they believe one of the shooters, one of the jackers, got shot. Because he ran away with his stomach holding, right? Holding his stomach and shit. But an innocent bystander, a girl, sitting down at one of my favorite restaurants, El Pastel. They have the motherfucking truffle menu that I post often on my Instagram stories. I've been going there for decades. I've been going there forever. It's one of my spots. It is a famous spot. A lot of celebrities go there and everything. It is a popping spot in Beverly Hills. Has been. And there have been robberies there before that. On camera and everything. So this shit is crazy that this shit happened. And look. Now you done fucked up because Beverly Hills, 35,000 residents. And out of those 35,000 residents, let me tell you something. 20,000 of them really got real paper. When I say real paper, I'm talking about money for real. And what does that mean? That means that they don't give a fuck if anyone's racist. They don't give a fuck anything. If you look like you're out of the, and let me tell you something real quick. Since way back in the day, if you drive like a fucked up car in Beverly Hills, they'll pull you over for a suspicious car and it's in their vehicle code. That's what Beverly Hills does. Taxpayers ain't fucking around. When you see all those Trump rallies out there, those people ain't fucking Beverly Hills natives. They're not residents of Beverly Hills. They don't give a fuck about those fuck. They don't give a fuck about Trump. And don't, look at, there are Trump supporters in, in Beverly but they're not like that. They ain't going out there trying to have protests and shit. But if you've been going down Rodale Drive for the last, like, I don't know, seven months, you'll see it's hood is a motherfucker. It looked like Slauson. Looks fucked up. People say, oh, why don't you say it's black people, blah, blah, whatever. All I'm saying is there's fights. There's all kinds of shit going on now. There's extra cameras now. There's more crimes, all kinds of shit. And I'm not saying it's because of color, because of whatever. What I'm saying is ever since the EDD situation has happened, the EDD scams on Rodeo is out of fucking control. Motherfuckers try to charge $300,000 in EDD in one day at a Gucci store, and then people got fired, all right? So I'm just letting you know, it's been fucked up in Beverly Hills, right? And there's just people trying to run scams and whatever it may be. So now, I promise you, inside 30 days or less, it could be in the next week, you are going to see zero tolerance, fuck shit. You don't see people fucking complaining or whatever? Cool, they don't give a fuck. They gotta take the city back, or it's really over for real. And it's really insane that this is happening in Beverly Hills, especially at this fucking spot. Now, Melrose Ave, it's been fucked up. There's been, you know, little incidents here and there, but now that streetwear has gone involved and, you know, there's all kinds of little sneaker stores, all kinds of shit over there, you watch and see. There's a reason when you go to a really, really nice mall, you're not gonna see a lids there. You won't see a full, you won't see some of these stores. They do that shit on purpose because they don't want fucking riffraff. And as I fucked them racist, yeah, it is. They don't give a fuck, all right? And, you know, Melrose, it was said that a cop had got carjacked and it wasn't true. It was a bounty hunter that was looking for a bounty. Apparently, some dudes on dirt bikes was all around acting crazy with on dirt bikes. And so the dude got tired of it, 
got out of his car, started some shit, and got knocked the fuck out. Yes, he was a white dude. He was tripping whenever, boom. Was he in the wrong? Nah, not necessarily. Should he have minded his own business? Probably so, okay? Melrose is hell rose now. It is all fucked up. I told you, I don't leave the house without my blapper. You know what I mean? I got the toaster on me always. And you know what? As crazy as me sounds, I don't got time for that shit. I, look, do whatever you want. Take whatever. Boom. But I'm not letting anybody hurt me or put me in a weird mood or give me PTSD or give me stress. Like, I'm just busting shots and dealing with shit later. Got a great attorney, whatever. Boom. I was in fear for my life. You know, all the shit that you want to say, there's a script for it. Okay? Fucked up, right? It is what it is. Life ain't fair. Life fucked up. Oh, you saying some shit? No, I'm being real. Don't go do stupid shit. All right. If you're going to act like a jackass, if you're going to play stupid games, you're going to win stupid prizes, you're going to get fucked up at the end of the day. I don't like police for stupid ass shit that they do, but if I'm going out out of my way to do dumb ass things, right, and I deserve to be fucked with, then it's fine. I get it. Totally fine. All I'm saying is, if you watch these videos on Melrose from yesterday, it is fucking crazy. They had a carjacker and a Tesla who got pulled out by fucking with shotguns and shit. Just Cops, they say, you know, I ran into a cop yesterday when we got back from our trip. And I said, let me ask you a question, man. I live right next door to a huge celebrity. And behind me is an enormous sports star. So I'm just curious, like, what the fuck? I haven't seen a cop drive by my place in almost three years. Right? I'm sorry. Ever. But it's been three years since I lived in this neighborhood, right? So I asked the cop, I'm like, hey, man, is everything okay? He's like, yeah, I'm, everything's cool. And I was like, all right, well, you know, I haven't seen a cop in three years on the street, you know what I'm saying, ever since I built my place here. And I'm just curious, what are you doing over here? He's like, oh, we heard some that there was reports of someone messing with trash cans. I was like, okay, cool. And we started talking about a little shit, start shooting the shit about, you know, just transients and random shit. And he's like, yo, all the stuff that's going on in the area, in Beverly Hills and everything else, he goes, we can't do anything about it. It's because that's LAPD. Beverly Hills is different, but I'm just saying, like, you know, it's just crazy shit that's going on. So be careful. If you're going to go to Fairfax or Melrose or other places, just know motherfuckers is looking for jackers, right? And at the same time, just know there is GPS and watches now. So if you're stupid ass, amateur ass, is going to steal Rolex or whatever, you might fuck around and be chilling at home, getting your dick sucked, you know what I mean? By a girl or a guy, where the fuck it may be. And next thing you know, you are busted. Now you're getting fucking arrested for fucking aggravated assault. All kinds of shit. Oh, man. Fuck about no, no, no. All them stories ain't going to work no more. Them motherfuckers are getting hip. This shit's no joke. All right? All right, guys. Look. We'll be right back. We're going to get to a commercial. And we're going to get to fan questions part two. And we're going to talk about this NBA motherfucking all-star game. And fucking Meghan Markle and all kinds of other shit. All right. We'll be right back, y'all. Yo, yo, BTB Army, you know the NFL draft season is coming up, and you know I'm a 12. So now with all this time on the bench, it is very possible that you might have Trevor Lawrence's haircut growing inside your pants. That's why our friends at Manscaped, the leaders in below-the-waist grooming, have partnered with us to make sure you don't gamble on shaving your balls the same way you like to gamble on football. For all of my draft fiends, we have an exclusive 20% off promo code BALLER at manscaped.com. Because of their ceramic blade and skin safe technology, your nicks and snags will be reduced. This is the perfect protection needed for your franchise quarter balls. Also, I want you to look in the mirror. Do you see any nose or ear hairs dangling? Look, guys, 79% of women polled. They admitted that long nose hair is a major turnoff. The Weed Whacker nose and ear hair trimmer is your solution. Why not use the best tools for the job here? Lucky for you, their performance package comes with the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0. The Weed Whacker nose and ear hair trimmer performance boxer briefs and a travel bag for you to use when you're done quarantining and some other liquid formations like the crop preserver and my favorite the crop reviver 
It's $39 in additional value plus 20% off for being BTB Army. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code BALLER at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code BALLER. It's time you turn that team in your pants around with Manscaped. Yo, yo. All right, fan questions part two. These are for the motherfuckers that put the fan questions in. And, you know, like I said, it takes two or three days to register. If you don't know what I'm talking about, once a month, we answer fan questions. You can more than welcome to leave a review. If you leave a five-star review in question format, I will answer the question on the show live. Use whatever alias you want to use. Use your real name. I don't give a fuck what you do. But that's how we get down. All right, Jordan, thank you for the questions. And let's get started. Will from the Bronx writes, what's good bands? Will from the Bronx. We've spoken a few times on Clubhouse. Salute for adding me to the chat. Would you consider putting King Kang on the podcast? He's an entrepreneur who went from broke to millionaire from wholesaling houses, over 2 million followers on TikTok, 200,000 on Instagram. I think he could spit some game with you. Much uh, love. Um, stay blessed. King Kang. I have no idea who the fuck you're talking about, Will. I have an idea who you of who you are. I think you're the dude who said uh, you live in Sacramento, right? No idea who the fuck that is. Um, sure. As long as he ain't no motherfucking scammer, I'm game. Uh, SDDRU writes, what's the name of the Korean gangster movie you posted on Sunday? That would have been Sunflower. Now, mind you, look, Sunflower is one of the most poetic, crazy motherfucking movies in the world. It's about a dude who's a little bit off, was a gangster, did some time. And then he comes back and tries to be a normal dude. It is in Korea. Look, it takes a long time for that movie to get started. All right? But once you go through all that hell in that slow-ass movie, you realize how poetic and beautiful that movie is. Yes, called Sunflower. All right. Next question is, I am Chris Cheek. Writes, what's good, Ben Baller? Hey, I had a question last week about the used cut luxury car SUV under 16K, and you said re-ask it so you can look into it, but I may just rock with the 335 I for another year until I could graduate college and cop that C63S. What mods would you recommend on the 335i for the time being? Appreciate the acknowledgement. My brother, salute. Um, if I were you, bro, I'd get an Isomin exhaust. I'd get the one with the sport cat that, you know, deletes the cat. If you can, don't know what city you're in, um, but I would save the money on the C63S and make sure you get some good links because it's on lowering links, you know what I'm saying? Lower the car, get some real nice solid wheels, get some good wheels, though. get some BBSs, get some HREs, get some solid, all right? And then get you a motherfucking legit exhaust in tune, either from DME, from Gintani. Somebody knows what the fuck they're doing because you get a lot of horsepower. You have a lot of fun with that car. Jacob's Laggle One. I don't know, man. What up, Ben? Can you get Andy Frisella on the podcast? I think it'd be, it'd be dope to hear you guys chop it up. Yes, Andy wants to get on the show. He wants me to get on the show. The thing with Andy is, Andy wants me to be on the show in person. All right, so I got to fly to fucking St. Louis, which is no problem. And he wants me to do the show, boom, whatever. I'll, I'll figure it out. Definitely, that's a, we could probably swap and do each other's show then. Pretty dope. Um, Gabe Glow at Pandemic Proof 20. What up, Ben? Hope you're keeping your head up as well as your spirits. How did you find out about Drakeo, the ruler, and what are your thoughts on him? I went to his court hearings two years ago to learn about the system, and it wasn't cool. Also, there is an udon noodle spot on Olympic in Vermont I'd love you to try called Mandarin Garden. Gabe, I, sh I should smack you in the mouth just for saying anything that's on Olympic Vermont. Um, they got fire chompong. Let's, bro, it's chompong. All right? And, bro, I've been going there for 35, maybe longer years. I uh, hope you enjoy those masks I sent. Uh, shout out to DBP Podcast, the best in the biz. Drakeo, the ruler, I actually found out from Adam22. Um, I think he's cool. I think he's dope. Real LA, you know what I'm saying? It's the kind of the new version, a new vibe, a new wave of LA rappers and stuff. And he got, you know, he got a real Drake feature, which everyone is like kind of the claim of fame. But he's cool. I don't really know too much about dude. Uh, why don't you tell us more about the court hearings next time? And please don't tell me about Mandarin Garden Dog. It's like, it's fucking crazy. You just said that to me, dog. It's fucking hilarious. Um, Peace Prosper writes, can you talk a little bit about NFTs? Would love to know what you think. Thanks. Kind of talked about non-fungible tokens. And um, look, it's all I hear about all day long. 
every day, all day. Everything's an NFT. Let's NFT this. Let's mint this. Let's mint that. You know, you should do your next baseball card as an NFT. Look, bro, everyone needs to fucking calm down. All right? Because the more you talk about this shit, it's going to make it 10 times worse when it crashes. Okay? Now, I'd rather get somebody on here to get a little more in-depth about the actual, uh, someone get a very wide range about NFTs. And that's cool. That dude Blau is killing it, right? Three LAW, who's like a DJ and doing it great. And great for them. Cool. Look, man, I'm not, like, I've already, I'm not trying to get to be the first person to get into a certain thing, whatever. I just know that in anything you do, when the playing field levels out, right, look how many people try to get into the NBA. Look how many people try to break rappers and, and try to make it, right? It's going to be the same thing with NFTs. You're going to have, you know, 1% of the NFTs are going to be successful. I don't want to jump in and just do it for the wrong way. But I do have some shit I've been working on with, with Murakami for a little while now before I start really blowing up and everything. So it's just a, a subject I'd rather bring somebody else on who's been doing them and could give you the full surround sound description about, or, you know, information about NFTs. I know enough to know what I need to get and whatever, but I still haven't wanted to buy anything. You know, it's just, again, there, there's so many different things and I'd rather have people get a full spectrum of information before I really like discuss it. Chula Vista local writes Gilly and Lil Duval. The Korean Denzel Washington, what's up? I am not the Korean Denzel Washington, by the way. Uh, during the pandemic, when you were on IG Live, I saw Gilly the kid join and was surprised that you two seemed like old homies from way back. How'd you guys meet? Do you have any Forrest Gump stories together? And would you ever have him on the show? Also, how did you meet Lil Duval? Any stories how you would have him on the show as well? I look up to three of you guys for big homie guidance since y'all keep 100 raw and cut. Much love from Dago. Uh, Gilly the Kid is just a homie through random homies from Philly. Gilly's a funny motherfucking dude, man. I love Gilly, man. I'm glad he's getting his flowers now and he's, and he's doing his thing. And uh, I'd have him on the show. I just hit him up like three or four days ago. He just, he just busted me up about a few things that he said. He's, he's really a fucking funny dude. Little Duval, I met in Vegas in like 2006. And he's like, oh shit, you Ben Baller. You know, he was really like, actually like in a way low-key starstruck and he was really happy that I knew who he was and I was actually a fan of his since like 2000, 2001 when he was opening up for uh, Cedric the Entertainer. And then we just started kicking and becoming cool. Lil Duvall's a good dude. I don't know if Lil Duvall would do the show, I'm down. You know, I just, I'd just be talking shit to him and he, I know he likes to troll me here and there, but he's, he's a good dude. Actually, Lil Duvall's a good dude. He'll say some ignorant shit here and there, but that's my boy. Uh, App Deuce Deuce or AP Deuce Deuce maybe. Best podcast out there. Been listening since day one. What's up, Ben? Hope everything is good with you and your family. Question, me and my friends are trying to start a clothing brand, but I've been meaning to ask you for some pointers, any advice. Appreciate you and your time doing this on the podcast. You have to ask yourself, homie, does anybody need your clothing brand? That's a genuine question. Do they need to have your clothes? Is what you're going to contribute to the garment industry and the fashion game going to change anything? Is it a quick buck? Is it a cash grab? What is it? You got to ask yourself that honestly. And if it's not going to change the game, it's not going to do anything else, whatever, and you just got nothing else to do and you're just too lazy to figure out things out, then I would tell you not to do it. Okay? Now, I say that to say this. You are what you invest in, right? And you should know what your market is. If you have no idea what your market is and you have no market, I don't think you have any business going into business in T-shirts or clothing, or whatever it may be, okay? Are you trying to start, you know, in pants, doing like chinos and jackets, cut and sew? Because to me, a t-shirt and hoodies on printable items is not necessarily a clothing brand. Yes, technically, by trade it may be, right? But really, it's like, you know, again, what are you trying to do? There's a million clothing brands out there in the world, from cheap to nice. And again, you got to ask yourself, what are you contributing to change the game, to bring something different and new? Those are the important questions you need to ask yourself. After that, you should better figure it out, homie. A Falcon Salmon Bro writes, fan question. What's up, Uncle Ben? My name is Damien. I am a first-gen American. What the fuck? Okay, I'm currently a sophomore in college. Just trying to make the most out of my life. And your podcast gives me a lot of inspiration. Quick question. I've been a car enthusiast all my life. More specifically into German cars. I see you talk a lot about BMW and Mercedes, but don't mention Audi too much. Personally, Audi is my favorite when it comes down to those three. 
Is there a reason why you don't show much love to them? Their new body styles is crazy, especially the RS6 Avant and the RS7. Much love from Portland, Oregon. Uh, Damien, I owned an R8. First R8 ever. I had the first R8 in LA. Well, one of the first ones, right? In a handful. Um, I think Audi's great. You know, my cousin has a Q, uh, SQ8. The S8, really nice car. The RS6 Avant, I've already said on the show, is dope. You know, but it just kind of came late. RS7, not my type of car. Not my thing or anything. I think Audi's great. They definitely don't get the love. I don't know what it is. They're different. I think Audis are kind of like, not Frank Mueller's. What's something a little cooler than that? Not a Vacheron because it's not as expensive as that. I'm trying to think. I don't know. But you know, I got nothing wrong with Audi. I think Audis are great. They're cool. I just, I kind of outgrew Audi, Mercedes, and Benz. I think Mercedes still kind of can hang in the things that I need from a car. But Audi, for the market, I mean, Audi, again, Audi's a great car. It's just not for me, but it's a great car. So I, I really don't have it. I don't know. I don't really have much to say to him because just, I just don't relate to him that much. Uh, last question of Fan Questions Part 2 is Jonathan P. 2019 writes, Oh, Desu, old boy, Uncle Ben. Day one listener, quick question. Did you ever spend any time in Santa Monica? If so, what were your spots? I worked in Santa Monica for most of my life. It would be cool to hear if you ever kicked it out here. Also, have you thought about having Baby Bash on the podcast? He's an OG just like yourself. And I feel like he'd have some dope stories. Peace and love, John P. I've spent a ton of time in Santa Monica. As a kid, my church was in Santa Monica on 2nd Street. Um, I remember when the 3rd Street Promenade was not the 3rd Street Promenade. I don't know if you're that old to know that. 3rd uh, Street Promenade is actually one of my fair places. I love the Huntley Hotel. I got married at Casa del Mar in Santa Monica. You know, I love the beach. Shea J's is dope. If you watch that show, uh, Goliath on Amazon Live. I'm sorry, Amazon Prime. Goliath is a Billy Bob Thornton show. Only the first season's good. That first season is a motherfucker. And it's filmed mostly in Santa Monica. Um, one of my favorite Mexican restaurants is in Santa Monica. And that's Lairs. L-A-R-E-S. Uh, was it Michael's? I forgot what the fuck. Was it Michael's? There was one of the most fanciest restaurants in all L.A. County was in Santa Monica. I got nothing but love for Santa Monica. Fred Seek, all that shit. I was kicking it up there all the time. Um, one of the very few Benihanas that were still owned by Steve Aoki and her famous family was the one on Broadway. But I've always had love for Santa Monica. Santa Monica's always been dope. I had, you know, just stories and memories from the pier, and from the beach, and going to Venice Beach and riding the bikes and just being out there. Um, Santa Monica's always been dope. Just not, you know, not my hood or anything, but I've always had super love for all over LA, man. There's just so many different places. But yeah, I've had mad love. And that is it for fan questions, guys. We're going to jump back into the show and get out of here. So, uh, Leggy Lake, can I get a little bit of music? And Gia Gia. So guys, to wrap this show up, I just wanted to say, before we get into sports talk, right, I kind of just saw bits and pieces for the Meghan Markle, Prince Harry interview on Oprah, and people say, oh, you could judge this, blah, blah, whatever, and I know a lot of black people are kind of like, yo, man, you know, we got to defend Meghan Markle, and for the most part, look, I get it. A lot of people are fickle, though. They're like, oh, Meghan ain't black enough, you know what I'm saying? She's half black, or she's a quarter black, boom, and then there's this, and then there's that, and then there's, oh, she's, you know blah, 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 and, and, you know, she's not black enough for us. Or that. And then some people are like, you know, fuck this, you know, she's black, she's black, right? I've seen so much division between all of us and definitely between black people. Am I black? No, don't give a fuck. I can state my opinion on what I need to state opinions on. Now, I've known Megan for, known Megan for 17 years, right? On and off, here and there. Haven't seen her since he started dating Prince Harry, all right? Prince Harry's been crazy. He was the dude that's partying, going to Encore, going to Excess, fucking Encore, sorry, Excess, partying heavy in England, UK, partying motherfucking uh, Ibiza, all over the place, right? Megan. Megan went to school with an ex-girlfriend of mine, okay? Megan went to Immaculate Heart in Hollywood Hills, which, guess who went there? Yes, my sister. All girls school. And guess what? In 19, let's see, 12, 19, in 1985, 
1985, the first time they let boys in was for summer school. It was only for summer school. And it was me and two other guys. Forgot the other two dudes' names. I actually went to summer school at Immaculate Heart, right? Took the bus straight up Western all the way up right to Los Feliz. And, you know, I've always loved Los Feliz, right? That was like my spot. My sister graduated from Immaculate Heart. She went to school with, some, with you know, a couple of famous kids. But in my age, in my year, Tyra Banks, Forrest Gump stories, right? Tyra Banks was uh, my year, my age, my class, whatever. And I went to junior high there. Anyways, 10 years later, my ex-girlfriend went to school at Immaculate Heart. And her classmate, because it's a small, pretty small school, her classmate was Meghan Markle. Random as fuck. Because I'm having dinner at Katana. I just fucking, do. I forget name all day yesterday, forgetting names here and there. I forgot that the heavy causes were called bronzes. I couldn't think of the metal, what the fuck it was. Me and Megan are having this conversation, okay? Megan is close with my friend Maya. Uh, I won't get too much into Maya, but um, Maya is a beautiful Japanese girl, ex-huge model in Tokyo. And um, my boy is best friends with Robin Thicke. I've known Robin Thicke for a very long time, but they're best friends. So now I'm introducing Robin's life a different way. Have you guys ever had that before where you have a dude who you're cool with, whatever, boom, then you become really cool with somebody else and they became best friends with someone else. And so it brought you guys in on a second different way. Like you guys met each other two or three times, but... You guys are always cool, but now you're introduced to them in a different way when you guys are already cool. I don't know if you guys followed that. I hope you did. I pray you did. So my boy Rich Gills, producer, he, uh, he's been around forever. He's one of the very few people I can say in, in the world who came from a very privileged family, but is also a really fucking cool dude. Really good guy, solid dude. Still makes music, and um, he... Uh, I'm not going to get into who he did it. Anyways, so Robin Thicke and Paula Patton are getting married in 2004. I remember because I would broken off. Well, my ex had broken off our engagement. I think I've told the story too many times. So I'm like in one of those weird moods and stuff and whatever. And I just try to like, you know, not talk about it too much. Now, what's crazy is we start talking about things and Megan breaks. Now, the funny thing is, ready for the... Megan's there because she's a friend of my friends, but she's also there because she's doing the party planning. Not the wedding planner, but she's kind of like the, the semi-co-wedding planner girl that's helping out at this wedding for Robin Thicke, which is happening in Santa Barbara. And I'm kind of like, the fuck? So Megan's cool, whatever, chilling, had these conversations. Super chill, chill girl, okay? Don't know too much about her. End up hanging out, Megan, kicking it, boom, she's cool. She's pretty, right? Not whatever. She's not like, she wasn't, you know, my type or nothing, but she wasn't ugly. She was cool. Just what, did never, I never had caught a vibe or anything. She was actually married at the time too, which is crazy, right? But she was just kind of off, just seemed off to me, right? And then as time goes on, she gets on that show Suits, right? She becomes a co-star. She starts blowing up. Her career starts coming out. She starts looking better. She definitely looked at least 10 times better once she got some paper, once she got some fame. And I thought it was funny. But then she became royalty. And every one of my homies I talked to, every one of my homies, people who have been friends with her for 10 plus years. If you cool with someone for 10 plus years, you've traveled, you went through drama, y'all went to this, that, and a third, and girls, you know, they're thick as thieves, right? They have all said, yo, Megan and changed. He's fucking crazy. This bitch is just a psycho and everything. She got mental issues, blah, blah, whatever. Then the whole issue that with her and her dad, and I don't know, like her dad's, I, I, look, she's beefing with her family. And the thing is, look, I could kind of relate because me and my dad don't rock with each other. Would my dad talk to the press? No. And if he did, would he say anything bad? No. So like, it, it's just a different type of thing. Now, there's all kinds of shit coming out. So my thing is, I don't know if I really listen to like, you know how they had this little bullshit story? And I say bullshit because... You know, the Buckingham Palace, whatever, the royals, they said that there was a, a person inside the Buckingham Palace that said Meghan Markle was very rude to her and blah, blah, whatever. Now, I believe it. How about that? I 1,000% believe it. Now, do I believe that racism exists in the, the Buckingham Palace and in, in the royal family? Absolutely. Do I believe that they were fucking Princess Diana? 
A million percent. So do I think that there's racism there? There is one million percent for sure. Now, the thing is, the British have colonized so many different areas. When me and my wife were in, in Antigua, in the West Indies, you know what I'm saying? This is all majority, all black people. Oh, I'm sorry. This is, how do I even say this with it? The Caribbean people, right? Which, I'm sorry, Afrocentric, but they are black people. And you know, the fuck is the other fucking, what's, what's Prince Harry's fuck? Not Prince Harry's, the Prince, uh, the fuck am I, I, I don't even fucking remember the fucking dude's name is. I don't even give a fuck about the royal family like that. But Queen Elizabeth was there with the, the his, his her granddaughter and like, you know, she fit the whole part, blah, blah, Duchess, whatever the fuck it may be. And, you know, they obviously got to deal with people of color all the time. It's, it's, it is what it is. Now, what am I getting at? What I'm getting at is, do I think there's racism? Yes. Do I think that, you know, at a certain point, she's going to be like, oh, fuck it, I'll deal with it, boom, whatever. Yes. Okay. Now, do I think that she was a bitch to whatever staffer that was on her? I believe it. Because just, you know, because I know Megan to a certain extent, you know. And do people change? Yes. Have I changed? Yes. Am I still the same person though, attitude-wise? A hundred percent. Right? If anything, I've become more compassionate and more humble than I ever was. So I went the opposite way. So technically, I kind of went to a better version of Ben than I was. Now, is that where? I don't know. All I'm saying is, I don't necessarily believe everything she's saying. Trying to say, oh, we're trying to get away from attention. So, Bitch, if that's the truth, then delete all your shit. Because I told you what I'd do if I hit, you know, once I hit my mark, th that's the goal. Delete all social media, do everything. Bitch, you ain't deleted shit. All right, so, I don't know. They announced that they're having a daughter. Congrats to them. If I ran into her, I would, you know, I don't know. It. I haven't seen her in six years or seven years. Would be interesting. By the way, fuck that whole interview and fuck all of them. Act on that fucking fake shock. Oh my God, really? Who, who would do this? Bitch. Anyways, let's get into some motherfucking sports, man. Um, All right. All-star game. Was it necessary? Uh, I mean, again, this was a totally unnecessary event that happened for whatever reason. And you know what? Look, I get why some players are saying it. And I'm just kind of bugged out. Everyone gets millions of fucking, you know, um, COVID tests. And on the court... You still see like LeBron, he's wearing a mask. We're talking to people. It's like, yo, bro, you're playing in the court, sweating, breathing, everything. Like it doesn't, I'm just, I don't know. Very strange. Now, do, do that, does that mask have an N95 filter or something or even a PM 2.5 filter? Just some of this shit just, and I get it. They're promoting safety and it's good. I'm just saying some of the shit just doesn't make sense. Everything's got to make sense with me, man. It just, well, it just drives me nuts. Um, that being said, very interesting that they, they pushed everything to Sunday. Now, did I like that? It, it, you know, if, again, for COVID, I understand. Now, if there is no COVID going on, I do like having the Friday night shit go on, then Saturday during the day, and it's just like it makes it a weekend thing, right? It's All Star Weekend, so this wasn't really All Star Weekend, except you got a bunch of fucking idiots in Atlanta that are just out in the clubs. And at this point, I'm almost convinced. Look, maybe COVID don't exist over there. It exists everywhere else in the world, but they've been ran through. Their fucking immune systems are so fucked up over there that they ain't got to worry about it. These motherfuckers don't change their pillow covers. They don't motherfucking wipe the fucking toilet seats down. The, who fucking knows? They share water with other people. I don't know. That shit look nuts. I can't imagine even with 10 vaccines, am I going through any of the places? Like, fuck that, you know? And I was just thinking about like seeing my friends party in Vegas. It's just like, I'm not going to say anything. If they want to listen to this and come comment to me after, I'm glad to have the conversation, but I'm just not going to go start the conversation about it. But it's something to talk about. When I see my homies partying in Vegas this weekend and boom, here and there acting stupid. And I'm like, yo, man, you know, that's just not you. No, what it's not me is I just can't be around some bitch that wants to meet Drake or just, you know, is, is interested and still, and you're still impressed by popping bottles. And just, again, I'm old and I get it. Just not me. What am I interested? I'm interested in kicking with my wife every single day, hanging out with my kids every single day and making money. So if I can't be with them when I'm making money, that's fine. When I come back though, all the fun things that I want to do in life, all the things I want to do that are important, I do with my kids. I can't wait till my kids are older and they can really appreciate the cars and all that stuff. Different right now. That's why you got the RV and we're appreciating it that way. So going back to the all-star shit, all those parties and everything, it's just stupid. The fucking NBA and, and 
was it not the FBI? Someone, they had to send out 200 or 2,000 cease and desist letters to make sure that there was no NBA affiliation with all these parties because of COVID and all this other crazy shit. Anyways, they had the skills challenge, which I didn't fucking even pay attention one second to and fuck Sabonis. Like, eh, it's whatever, right? There's uh, the three-point contest was before the All-Star game, which I thought was interesting because now your arms get fucking tired, right? You're out there shooting fucking... 20, 30 shots, whatever, sweating here, breaking a sweat. But again, you know, these dudes are, you know, keeping up and super healthy and just in a different level of body than than people were back in the 80s, 90s, and even 2000s, right? So I'm watching this shit, you know, and I'm just like, damn, Mike Conley is fucking out there, you know, still doing his thing, like barely, boom, balling, whatever, watching motherfucker Jason Tatum. Everyone looks pretty good, you know, and uh, Donovan Mitchell looks good. And then Steph Curry comes up, I'm like, yo, man, Steph is going to knock these bitches down. And he did. He really just crushed it. You know, it's just like, I never hated stuff. I actually fuck with you. I like the way you, who couldn't, who doesn't like him, right? But like, Steph really is fucking amazing. Like, he's just incredible. Is Dame a better point guard? I think in a certain way, I think, I don't know. With the money on the line, I don't know, man. It's a tough one. I might have to give it to Dame. I think Dame has more like game breaking, winning shot at the end. Steph, accuracy, crate. I'm just saying with the game on the line, Man, it's Dame time. You know what I'm saying? And I can't believe someone hasn't given his fucking own watch yet. I can't believe he doesn't have his own fucking, even a Timex, fucking Omega, something. Come on, people. What the fuck? Going back to the three-point contest. Steph Curry wins, of course. He wins, of course. And um, I think about it, right? There's things about Steph Curry that kind of, not bother me so much, but just super being PC, right? Being ultra PC. It's very bay, very politically correct. But at the same time, he don't bother nobody. Don't get involved with nobody. He's a, just a good guy. So how could you be mad at that, right? His father, the whole nine. Um, not a big fan of his wife, which, which but for many different small petty reasons. But when I think about it, I think about, he's about the minimal amount of PC that I love at a sports champion, an elite athlete. And when I think of Russ Wilson, I think of Russ being so fucking PC, almost to the point where it's fake, and just it just irritates the fuck out of me. And now, I want to go back to the All-Star game and not talk about Russ. Yo, all I know is, man, I'm not going to say what sources or anything. I'm just hearing that there is insane drama between Russ and Pete motherfucking Carroll. All right, so look, I don't see Pete going anywhere. Motherfucker's a VP of the goddamn fucking organization. I can't see Paul Allen's wife. Uh, what the fuck's her name? I'm drawing a blank. You know, she doesn't know how to fucking run a team. I don't, if it gets down to it, I just think Russ is gone. So at this point, if Russ is acting funny, if there's drama, whatever, look, man, give me Deshaun, give us something dope, and, and let's just get this fucking pushing. Yo, we won 12 fucking games. Sports organizations in football in the NFL spend 70 fucking million dollars to win 12 games, all right? So I ain't crying. Look, I think we got a great fucking squad. We need to kick this fucking ass. Back to the motherfucking all-star game. That first half of basketball was phenomenal. It, just as far as excitement and everything that's going on. But the last minute of the second quarter, going into halftime, that last minute, that exchange between Steph Curry Duncan, which you don't see him, on an inbound pass, inbound alley-oop pass for a dunk, for Steph to hang like that too, crazy. Then for him to throw the ball to CP3, by the way, me and Chris are the same height. For, to, and I know it was kind of like he was kind of off. But yo, he got up enough to where it was a motherfucking dunk. And that bitch went in. Okay? To see motherfucking Chris Paul dunk that bitch on an alley-oop. Crazy. That was fun. And especially because Chris ain't some young dude. You know? He's been in the league now quite a bit. He's, you know, he's, he's shit been in the league 15 years or so, right? I don't know. That was amazing. Then for fucking Dame to hit a half-court shot behind the line. And then Steph immediately hits a half-court shot in front of the line. It was incredible, right? So we get to halftime. We got the dunk contest. Now, my boy Mike Rapport was talking shit about only being three contestants, whatever. Look, they did it at halftime. So I kind of understand. They probably maybe screened through a few people, boom. But the thing is, all three contestants, they did what they did, whatever. Look, man, I'm just really wasn't impressed at all whatsoever. But what did suck is 
I don't know what's going on. In the last three years, the judging in the dunk contest has been so bad that I just like, I want to fucking punch Josh Smith in the mouth. Like, Josh, what the fuck you doing? Even Spud Webb, like, come on, Spud. Like, you've been around so long. Like, dog, what the fuck is up with you? Them dunks was whack. Doo-doo won it, man. What the fuck is that? I don't even, look, don't even, oh, you know, you a casual, what, bro? I don't give a fuck about some dude on Portland, Oregon. You know what I'm saying? On the motherfucking goddamn fucking trailblazers. Like, especially some dude who ain't even a fucking starter. Like, bro, that kiss the rim was whack as fuck. And the other dunks, just the whole touching the fucking, uh, the backboard with the ball that was fucking attached with the like little fucking little stand on there. Man, fuck that dunk. I said a couple dunks that are going to win it for sure. Look, man, someone jump up and sit on the rim. At that point, you'd have to have, what, 100 inch vertical? But someone jump up and sit on the rim. Do that, all right? Get a ball, attach it to your head somehow, to your neck or some shit, right? Don't use your hands. Dunk the fucking ball with your head. And have that bitch going. There's got to be a way to figure it fucking out. Have it fucking sitting in a fucking like a strap or some shit, whatever. It could be done, all right? Next thing, I don't know if it's fucking doable, but go up for a dunk. Have a UFC fighter. It's got to be somebody fucking, you know, that's popular. At least a champion of some shit. And have that motherfucker kick you in the chest, kick you in the arm, kick you in the leg while you're dunking. And if you make it, it's a fucking amazing dunk. Am I crazy? Yeah, maybe slightly. All right. So anyways, going back, I love the way that the format of the game is, how they run it up, how they go one quarter, two quarter, three quarters. And on the fourth quarter, they add everything up. First one to 170. Dope ass format. I was impressed, man. I thought the game was dope, man. I fuck with it, you know. That's NBA All-Star Weekend, and, and it is what it is. And yeah, um, I'm waiting for this fucking NFL draft to see what the fuck's going to happen and what all these trades are going to do. And yes, I eventually do want to have somebody talking about NFTs on the show. I do want to have, I mean, I have a lot of people on the, the, these guests that are, that are lined up to come on, but, you know, I got a lot of shit going on. Now, sports bubble, real quick. Sports card bubble. A Kobe Bryant 2015, 2016 Prism just sold for like 175 grand. Like, yo. Tom Brady rookie just sold for over a million. Shit is really getting crazy. I don't know what else to say to you guys. It is getting fucking nuts. So get in on the action. There's no excuse at this point. All right, guys. Look, I already told you guys how much I love you. You know it's not going to stop. You guys have made this show popular worldwide. BTB Army, you will be rewarded. I do a lot of giveaways. You did see I gave away $10,000 this weekend. All right. On Friday night, I gave three guys $10,000. I gave $5,000 and two $2,500 gifts. Do you know what? These guys were crying on the phone, so happy. They were just random dudes. All of them had kids. They were fucking, it was an amazing feeling to hear these guys so humble and just, you know, I'm on mute. They didn't even know I was on the phone. My boy Mike called them up. It's fucking amazing. So we're going to do that again because that feeling is amazing. All right. So, guys, have a great week. Remember, it's Monday. You got to make it a great day, okay? And I appreciate you guys listening to the podcast. Do me a favor. Tell a friend to tell a friend about Behind the Baller Podcast. All right, y'all? All right, much love. I will see you guys on Thursday. That is the weekend wrap-up. Lakey, Lake, I know you're in your little E30 vert. You know what I'm saying? But I need some beats so we can get the fuck out of here. Peace, y'all. Peace, y'all.